Now what you see here is the very beginning of one of my two uh, high tunnels, uh, also known as uh, hoop houses. And they're light greenhouse type of structure that uh, you can find now in more and more farms. And uh, I always had one or two kind of smallish uh, on the side of my farming, but uh, lately it has become a main focus for me. When you protect a crop from the wind, if you do nothing more than protect it from the wind, it can get twice as tall. Lysianthus is an example. Snapdragons are another example. Uh, if you can give yourself an extra month on either side of the season, for instance, our Fayetteville Farmer's Market starts at the beginning of April, and the earliest we had ever been able to have full-sized outdoor lettuces was the beginning of May. And that means you've got an entire month of busy farmer's market season when people are hungry to buy something that if you can have it ready from the get-go, you can have it add a whole extra month onto your early season. You're talking thousands of dollars of extra income. Then here we have our tomato production. That we should start picking tomatoes probably next week. Uh, these plants, as you can see, they're, some of them are needing to be clipped up. Uh, we'll typically pick off these plants for about five months. We'll go through September, October, November, December. About January, we'll start pulling these plants out and put in for our spring crop. Uh, we've had tomatoes every month in large, large amount of quantities, uh, except for this last two weeks. And that's pretty much been our transition window. And a lot of that's determined on how much sunlight we get, even being in the greenhouse. Light is a very important effect on growth. If we have a lot of cloudy, rainy days, it's going to slow us down, and that's what we've experienced. As far as peppers, here's one. This is a, I, I'm not sure you can really tell. This is an average size for the plants. I get actually bigger um, peppers than this. They are thick. They color up faster than on the outside, again, because of heat-related things. And of course, you're going to get the season extension part of the high tunnel advantage on the peppers, which means when, when the first light frosting will happen around October 15, around here, you're going to get maybe three more weeks of high uh, productive weeks of uh, pepper growth um, in late falls that you wouldn't get on the outside. Well, what you can grow in um, unheated hoop houses really, really well are winter salad greens. So that includes lettuces, lettuce mixes, endive, um, beets do well, carrots do well, but primarily we were interested initially in producing all the greens that we wanted for the farm for the winter time. When we built this one, the idea is that we can market greens, uh, salad greens to the a health food store or to our CSA. We can extend our CSA by a month or two until Christmas and offer them fresh salad greens. And we had the most beautiful crop of spinach we've ever had. Uh, it had huge leaves on it. And outdoor spinach, we had, it's been hit or miss with us many times. Yeah, inside your insect pressure can, can multiply rapidly on you. Uh, we've had experience, to, when we first started out, uh, we've lost the total crop uh, to, to aphids and spider mites. Uh, till you know what a spider mite looks like, you don't have a clue. And once they're there, they're hard to get rid of, and they can they can take you down fast. And being inexperienced, you know, five years ago, it took us down fast. And so, you you learn sometimes the school hard knocks, and that's the fastest way. You won't forget those things. And uh, so, we scout regularly every day. If you're in here working, you'll see something. And if you see a problem, you better take care of that problem quickly. And because it can magnify fast in a greenhouse. Whereas outside, you've got the natural predators that, that are going to help it, and the, the rains to help wash things out, too. We basically have no control for tomato funguses except growing them in a greenhouse. So normally, uh, <clears throat> of course, around here, there's not much of a normal for summer precipitation. It's either dry or it's wet or it's somewhere in between. You never know what's going to happen. If we have a really wet year, tomato funguses are bad. Normally you can get a pretty good crop without any uh, control. Some years the late crop is completely lost due to tomato funguses. And that is one reason we built that new greenhouse, is to be able to extend our tomato harvest, at least for our CSA customers. What I'm getting from this structure in summer is what the French farmers that I visited in uh, last year in France are getting is 
better yield, better quality. And I'm talking about three to five times more tomatoes per plant. And I'm talking about an amazing amount of um, protection against major aspects of uh, uh, disease um, that we encounter with tomatoes. And in that first summer, in the very first crop we put in, we're sure that we paid for that those two houses. Um, those houses had have three foot sidewalls, or or have uh, six foot bow spacings, and are easy to construct. And you can almost reach the top with your by standing on your tiptoes. Not quite, but we've had really good luck with them. But when we decided that we wanted to have more indoor space, um, we wanted to be able to grow tomatoes and cucumbers and lilies in addition to snapdragons, and all these are unheated. This is uh, based essentially on a very high quality square tube, one inch square tubing, micro galvanized, 20, 20 foot long. 20 foot long is the industrial length that costs the least amount of money to work with. What that means is once you bend it, which I do that myself with a bender, it actually becomes a 16 foot wide structure with an 8 foot apex in the middle. What that means essentially is based on my setup of beds, which was already in the fields because I put those on top of the fields. I have a perfect fit, almost a perfect fit, where I can actually include three beds. So it's bed, path, bed, path, bed. And um, as you can see, based on where my path is and based on the fact I'm six, about 5'11", it's a perfect clearance for me to go on those two paths. I've invested in each of those um, structures $1,500. It's 100 foot long, and I said it's 16 foot wide, okay? So there is um, three beds. Um, essentially, it's 100 foot long beds by four foot. So it's 400 feet, uh, square feet of beds times three beds. So it's 1,200 square feet of ground I can cultivate in each of those. I spent $1,500. And the first year in each of those, I just made a quick calculation of how much money I'm gonna make this year in each of those. I came up, and I think I'm on the low side, with $5,000. So how many things can you do in your farm, on your farm, that you can invest $1,500 and before the end of the year, you get $5,000 back? So the advantage of having multiple houses is rotation, being able to have, move your stuff around. My next farm will have be covered in, in hoop houses. Of course, it'll be work, you know, technology, you know, work against the wind. We have ferocious fierce storms in the winter that I have to contend with. So a lot of technology, you know, to make those uh, greenhouses really strong and, and tight and solid on the ground. Otherwise, it's a no-brainer.